Okay, here we go. We're on the AC side of my power wall. Um, we're coming out of the main panel here. This is a work in progress, so bear with me. I'm still running tests. Um, so I'm coming out of the main panel. I've got a 60 amp two pole breaker. I've got number sixes going over to feed the inverters. So that's 120 volts on L1, 120 volts on L2, uh, and then it's sharing the neutral over in the inverters. So then I'm going up to an 18 by 18 junction box. I've got number 10 THHN stranded going to the sub panel and I'm transferring Romexes up here to this terminal strip. And then I found these, I don't know if you can see it very good, these fork connectors. Um, I figured I'd use those with number 10 stranded because I didn't want any of the wires getting out and shorten. And then I found the terminal strips that I found have a heat shrink. So that's pretty cool. That helps, you know, so they don't pull out and it, it makes a nice secure connection. So I use number 10s and one inch PVC going over to the sub panel. It's kind of hard to see here. I've got some of my tiles back in, but I did that because of the uh, D rating. Um, some of you electricians out there know about the D rating. So number 10 and a one inch conduit, you get better fill that way. And we'll walk around to the inverter room. And they're currently running all my circuits out of the sub panel. So here's the PVCs. The panel's on the other side of that wall, maybe about 10 feet away. And they're coming across. And four of them are going down into the sub panel. That's I've got a little bit of room for um, expansion here. Then my number six feet is coming into that six by six up there and then I, I've got it paralleled um, and I'm coming down to this disconnect here isolates the line side of the inverters over here both of them and I wanted a way to work on the inverters in case there was an issue or I had to service something. I didn't want to be completely out of power. So the reason why I split those or paralleled the, the main feed coming in from the 60 amp two pole was so that I could use this manual transfer switch and I can go from the top is, is the main panel, house panel your common is feeding the sub panel over here and then down is my inverters so now if we have an issue with the inverters or something blows on it I want to work on it I can throw this up and go back to main power main grid power and then I've totally isolated the inverters out of the circuit so that's those and this is my sub panel here I've got a main panel surge protection on it and I've got I'm not using all these breakers I've got some spare spare circuits in here that I can use like I said I'm still running tests to figure out what I can get in here but um, so far I've got my refrigerator uh, family room receptacles what we call a kids room it's a kind of a Florida room the basement, cubby lights, um, and TV receptacle in the our family room. My office, which has my computer, another TV. That kids room has a TV in there as well. So I'm running three TVs and a computer. Uh, the basement and dining room lights, my internet. I've got security cameras on here, my furnace, sump pump, and kitchen lights. So, in an emergency situation, obviously I wouldn't be running all of it, but with my tests I've ran so far off of these 16 batteries, um, should we lose power, and that's a nice benefit to being off grid, I can, basically I got a backup generator, and of course you have no smell, no noise. 
and in a power outage situation, I'd be running my internet, my security cameras, probably a TV, my refrigerator, and if I need the furnace. And I've pretty much figured on just running my necessities, I can last anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, depending on what I run. But if I'm running the minimal, I can go probably two days without power. And I don't have solar yet. That'll be in a future video. Um, so we'll be back with more videos to dive deep into the build and go from there. Thanks for watching.